Hey guys, what is up and now welcome you to a new League of Legends video. In this video, I will be giving you guys my new and updated top 5 assassins list. This one is going to be for the new patch, patch 4.18. And in all honesty, this is probably one of the biggest changes to my tier list so far. I have swapped in and out a lot of champions and moved a lot of champions from certain positions as well. So before we get into it, don't forget this is my personal opinion and my personal list. As someone that does main assassins in Diamond Elo, Low, these are the ones in champion select that I will probably look look at and prioritize over the other ones. But I obviously will be giving you pros and cons about every single champion I list in every single top 5 spot. And for people wondering, I will be also updating my other lists. For example, my top 5 AP mids, my top 5 AP underrated mids, and also I want to start a new one, which I'll title something along the lines of top 5 cheese mids, which will talk about champions that you don't see mid often but are extremely viable and strong. So with all that being said, let's go straight to the number 5 spot. And I'm sad to say that this is going to be the champion I listed as number 1 in my previous iteration. Talon. But Talon isn't by himself this time, he's gonna be together with Yasuo. The reason for this is because I honestly couldn't decide which one of the two that I wanted to put in my number 5 spot. So I decided to just put both of them at this spot because I think they're equally strong and they're both in equal positions. But first, let's talk about the pros. Despite what's been happening to them, both of these champions are still pretty strong. And they both still do have the potential to carry. And I also like both of them because both of their laning phases aren't that bad, especially Yasuo, who can be quite a bully in lane. On top of that, they both have decent wave clear with Talon of course having his W and Yasuo constantly being able to throw out his Q and a tornado. And a huge reason as to why I really enjoy playing Talon and Yasuo is the fact that both of these champions have a very low cooldown ultimate. But the cons is the fact that both of them got nerfed, especially Yasuo who just keeps getting nerfed patch after patch. When are they gonna stop nerfing him? I have no idea. But I really wish that they would stop. Yasuo still gets banned and ranked and I honestly don't understand why he really is not a band worthy champion. I don't know how much more they have to nerf this champion before he stops getting banned. And altogether, both of these champions are starting to slowly lose what exactly makes them what they are. Yasuo is losing power on his E, which really made Yasuo what he is. He lost the passive on his W, which also really made what he is. Then you have Talon absolutely losing the silence on one of his abilities. Which let's be honest, a huge reason why Talon was picked is because he's like the only assassin that had a silence ability. And overall, these champions just got hit too hard while other champions either did not get touched or even got buffed. Going to the number 4 spot is going to be a champion that I have been listing around this area in most of my top 5 lists, Fizz. This is a small little champion that has always had the exact same strengths and weaknesses. And since this little thing has not been touched for quite some time, I feel like he still definitely deserves having this spot on my list. The pros of this guy is the fact that he snowballs exceptionally hard, because he has absolutely crazy ratios on his abilities, to the point where that you just need to get your first two items, for instance, Deathfire Grasp and Lich Bane, and you'll absolutely shred people. He has pretty good mobility with his Q and his E, especially of course his E being able to dodge a build altogether. He also has pretty good AoE thanks to his E ability and even his ultimate. But with all that being said, the cons of Fizz also are pretty heavy. He has an extremely poor laning phase because he has no range on any of his abilities, so farming can be extremely difficult against any champion that is a bully in lane. He's one of those champions where you have to sit back almost without any other option and just wait for level 5, 6, or 7 before you start making aggressive plays. He's also a champion that is very easy to learn but somewhat difficult to master to properly utilize his E and his ultimate. And speaking of his ultimate, it can be somewhat awkward to use if you're not used to it. Because the travel time on it is quite short as it is a slow ultimate, it does stop at wherever your cursor is rather than flying the max range distance. And all in all, it can be somewhat easy to miss and whiff if you're not used to it. So Fizz definitely deserves the number 4 spot because he's the definition of a high risk high reward champion. Having a very poor laning phase but if you get past it without being too behind and you get your item somewhat on time, you will snowball so hard and just demolish your opponents. In the number 3 spot is going to be a champion that I have been excluding in most of my top 5 lists, but I am somewhat proud to finally put her on my list the second time in a row and even moving her up a few spots. This is a champion that has been really seeing a resurgence recently. And quite honestly, the main reason for that is because the other top assassins, <coughs> Yasuo Talon, are getting nerfed. So the assassins that have been sort of hiding in the dark without being touched are finally getting their spotlight. And Akali is definitely one of those champions. One thing that I really like about Akali is that she has a huge power spike 
Spike at level 6. Speaking of which, her ultimate gives her extreme mobility, she can instantly stick on a target for so long. And getting away from Akali is probably one of the hardest things you can do. She also has a very solid damage output because she can burst and have it consistent. Since the cooldown on her abilities is extremely low, so she can Q, Alt, Auto Attack, E, and then do it all again in just 4 or 5 seconds, while having pretty deadly auto attacks thanks to her passive. She also has her W which can be used over walls to reveal foggy areas, on top of using her W for stealth, which I'm pretty sure that she is the only assassin champion that has invisibility that is not an ultimate. The cons of Akali is that her laning phase is also somewhat subpar, but it is slightly better than Fizz, because she does have her Q, which is a ranged ability she can use for harassing and CSing, and she can even use her W for harassing and CSing as well. She's also pretty decent at escaping ganks during the laning phase, again, thanks to her W. And the next con I have listed is the reason why I list Akali at number 3 and not something like number 2 or number 1. The fact that she's easily countered with either a pink or an oracle lens. She's extremely reliant on her W to make plays and to really reset all of her skills to go in again for the burst. And being countered this hard and this easily can be quite an issue. And the final point is the fact that she has little to no CC, of course her W really being the only solid CC from her kit. And even then, it's really not that good. But still, definitely a deserving number 3 spot for someone that's slowly moving up in the ranks of the assassins. In the number 2 spot is going to be a champion that I'm sure a lot of people are shocked by. Katarina has always been a champion I've been pretty much excluding from my list because I just simply didn't like her. And I really did feel that all the other assassins I used to list before were just simply better picks. But like I said earlier, the way the meta usually changes in League of Legends is that a handful of champions get nerfed while a handful of champions that have not been touched move up in the ranks and suddenly become pretty strong. In my opinion, Katarina is the prime example. She has not been touched in ever so long, so that all the champions that have been getting touched and nerfed, so like Yasuo Talon again, move down in the ranks, while other champions that have not been getting nerfed nor buffed but have been slowly moving their way up. And she is also a champion I've been recently picking up once again and really enjoying her. So the pros of Katarina is that I honestly think that she's potentially the strongest assassin in teamfights. Because if you're patient and go in at the right time, you can instantly mop up a teamfight with your passive thanks to the reset. And she can dish out so much AoE damage. Thanks to her E and her passive, she can have quite a bit of mobility. Quite literally hopping around the teamfights picking up kill after kill. And one thing I've been really liking about Katarina is the fact that you can early dive a champion because you can go in, get the kill, and then instantly use your E to get out. Her ultimate is extremely strong, dishing out an absurd amount of damage in just 2.5 seconds. And of course, like any other assassin, she can snowball like crazy. And let's be honest, next to Fizz, this is not a champion you want to see fed. The cons of Katarina is the fact that she's easily countered by CC a lot more than any other assassin. So you really have to pick and choose your fights carefully. On top of that, Katarina has no CC herself, not even a slight slow. But luckily she does not need it thanks to the absurd amount of damage and mobility she can have thanks to her passive. And the final con is the fact that her ultimate is a channel ability which obviously requires her to stand in one spot just spinning around. Because of this her ultimate can be cancelled and quite a lot of damage can be stopped. And also because such a high mobility champion is required to be quite honestly the opposite of mobile while channeling her ultimate. At least you can stop it whenever and continue on with the resets. But overall I definitely think she deserves the number 2 spot and I'm sure a lot of you might have been shocked seeing her all the way up in this list. And finally the number 1 assassin I have listed for this top 5 assassins for 4.18 is gonna be my favorite champion in the game, Zed. Now the first thing I want to point out is that this is not a biased opinion. In fact, I don't think I've ever listed Zed as the number 1 assassin in every single top 5 assassins video I have ever made. I've always put him somewhere in the middle, but I am so damn happy to finally be able to put him in the well deserved number 1 spot. Like I said, other assassins got nerfed, Zed actually got buffed, which is so much more reason to finally move him up to the number 1 spot where he belongs. So the pros of Zed that I have is the fact that first of all, he's finally number one. Hell yes. He also has long range poke thanks to his W and his EQ combo. Which does obviously mean that his laning phase is pretty strong because he's quite honestly the only assassin that has long range harass in the laning phase. And this is harass that actually means something. He is probably the best assassin in terms of mobility because no other assassin is able to traverse the amount of distance he is able to with his shadows. Especially his ultimate shadow. And another thing I love about Zed is the fact that he has so many mind games with the amount of shadows he can have of course from his W and his ultimate that the 
opponents will just have no idea where you'll go next. The amount of burst damage he can apply is also quite absurd, and on top of this, he's probably one of the best at dueling assassins in the game, which is why he is so popular with his split push strategy. Now the cons of Zed is the fact that his ultimate, unfortunately, can be quite easily countered, thanks to Quicksilver's Sash and of course, Zhonya's. And there are even champions like Kale and Lissandra, or even Zillion, that simply counter his ultimate as well. And then also, you have Zed being probably one of the most difficult assassins to learn, because being able to properly manage his shadows is not an easy thing to do. And once the game gets to the point where everyone has a QSS, has a Zhonya's, has a Kale, a Lissandra, a Zillion, being able to play around that with Zed can be quite a challenging task, but if you know how to do it, and if you're able to do it, you are such a monster and a beast. And once Zed gets fed and ahead, if he ever split pushes, he can almost 1v1 anyone in the game, so it becomes almost impossible for the enemy team to decide what to do, and to figure out how to stop you. So Zed finally getting the number one spot much deserved and I'm extremely happy to see him in this area. I'm sure a lot of you also have been seeing the resurgence of Zed in solo queue. But that is it for my top 5 assassins video for patch 4.18. I hope you guys have learned something new and maybe got an idea of a new assassin or champion that you want to pick up and start playing thanks to my list. Remember, this is my personal opinion, and these are the champions in this exact order that I probably will prioritize in solo queue. But once again, I hope you guys did enjoy. Please don't forget to throw in a like if you did, share it with your friends, and I wish all of you good luck in solo queue. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.